In this lesson, we'll explore some of the key treaties and agreements that shaped the relationships between indigenous peoples and European powers during the period from 1713 to 1800. These treaties played a pivotal role in the history of Canada, impacting various indigenous communities and their interactions with European colonizers. Let's begin with the Covenant Chain from 1677 to 1755. This was a diplomatic relationship between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anglo-American colonies. It was symbolized by the exchange of wampum belts and silver Covenant Chain medals. The Covenant Chain was significant as it established a form of alliance and trade between the British and Indigenous nations. The Treaty of Portsmouth in 1713 marked the end of Queen Anne's War and had implications for Indigenous communities in the Northeast. It resulted in the transfer of Acadia, present-day Nova Scotia, from France to Britain. The treaty's transfer of territory disrupted the established relationships between Indigenous nations and European powers. The Mi'kmaq and Wabanaki peoples in particular faced challenges as they navigated British rule and the encroachment of British settlers on their ancestral lands. The Peace and Friendship Treaties of 1713 to 1760 were a series of agreements between the British Crown and various Indigenous nations in Eastern Canada. These treaties aimed to establish peaceful coexistence and regulate trade. They are still in effect today and are significant for Indigenous rights and land claims. The British Inuit Peace Treaty in 1765 was an agreement between the British Crown and Inuit peoples in Labrador. It aimed to regulate trade and ensure peaceful coexistence. This treaty is one of the earliest examples of diplomatic engagement between the British and Inuit and reflects the importance of trade networks in the North. The Treaty of Fort Stanwix in 1784 addressed land claims in the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes region. The treaty contributed to the colonization of indigenous lands by moving the borders of indigenous land set out in the Royal Proclamation of 1763, resulting in a loss of indigenous territory. The Haldimand Proclamation in 1784 recognized the land rights of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy in the Grand River Valley because of their alliance with the British during the American Revolution. It provided a reserve for their use and is significant for its acknowledgement of indigenous land rights. The Jay Treaty of 1794 between the United States and Britain affected indigenous nations living along the border. It allowed for the free movement of indigenous peoples and goods across the Canada-US border, as well as the ability for them to live and work in the United States if they were coming from Canada, reaffirming indigenous sovereignty. The Treaty of Greenville in 1795 brought about an end to the war between the United States and Indigenous peoples in the Northwest. It resulted in the surrendering of Indigenous lands in the Ohio Valley. It aimed to establish peaceful relations and trade, but this was only temporary as settlers continued to venture into Indigenous lands. In conclusion, these treaties and agreements between Indigenous peoples and European powers during the 18th century were complex and had varying impacts on Indigenous communities in Canada. They remain significant today as they continue to influence Indigenous rights, land claims, and relationships with the Canadian government. Understanding this history is crucial for recognizing the ongoing importance of these agreements and shaping Canada's Indigenous policies and relations.